We've got a question here from Caleb, who has a brilliant YouTube channel called A Swifty Tilting Planet. He asks, how do you start right. learning a new API or framework? Do you build a new app or just start a Swift playground? That's a great question. And I think it all comes down to like, what am I learning? And when, uh, you know, also what you, how you prefer to learn. So for me personally, I love Swift Playgrounds and it's my go-to tool for learning new things or experimenting in general, prototyping, um, you know, whatever it might be, I tend to start with a playground. But sometimes it's not enough. Sometimes you want to have that app context or you want to build something real with it, you know? For example, with, again, coming back to Swift UI because I think it's a, it's a good example and something a lot of people are learning right now. Um, I was... I started learning Swift UI like the day it came out, right? Like just like just like yourself, right? You even wrote a book about it the day it came out, which was very very funny. Uh, but you know, we, everybody like a lot of people started when it came out, and I did too. I, I opened up a playground, I started playing around with it, and I, I learned the API. But it wasn't until I actually built a real app using it, like an app that I'm using every day myself. I built like an internal little tool for myself uh, that I'm using every day now, and. It was not until I did that that I fully understood Swift UI, you know? And I think that is an important distinction to make as well, is that you can learn sometimes, you can learn the API, you can learn what the classes are, you can learn how they work, but once you start putting things into practice and you use it in real projects, that's when you discover the trade-offs, that's when you discover, uh, you know, the rough edges, if you will, or just l it might not be rough edges in the tool it might also be gaps in your own knowledge and things you need to go back and 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 rediscover so i would say like in general playgrounds for learning new apis things like that for experimentation but for fully understanding a technology i really want to build something real with it whether it's just a small little app whether it's a just a throwaway project whether it's a prototype or whether it's something real right it's that ability to say i get this thing on paper I'm going to try it out. And when you do, you realize, well, actually, this bit here isn't quite what I anticipated, or what I hoped for. Because SwiftUI, it's amazing, right? I love what it does. I love the way it makes me think. I love the way it ties me down to write code in a certain way, because I can't just hack around anymore. It's got to be much more strict, which is good for my brain in the long term. But at the same time, there are some right. things it just can't do. And you're off to UI kit land repeatedly. And as your app grows in size, you reach for more and more and more UI kit. You want collection views, you want text views, you want attributed strings, for example. None of those things are in Swift UI. So you reach for UI kit or, or map kit or whatever you want to reach for. And uh, yeah, that's a trade-off that you wouldn't otherwise necessarily have seen. Like you, you want to change the uh, separator inset on your table view. It's trivial in UI kit. But Swift UI just isn't there with the maturity, with the complexity yet. No, it will eventually, but right now, it isn't. And you might, might not realize that. If you just read your articles or, or my books about it, you might go, oh, yeah, SwiftUI is amazing. Until you start actually following along and trying it yourself, you won't realize, okay, the, I can't do that. Or, whoa, that's surprisingly hard to do this thing that was trivial in UI kit. Exactly. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely a recommendation I always give is that to try things yourself. And it also is something I always think about. You know, you mentioned writing articles and things, and I know we're, we're going to talk about that more in, in a bit, but... You know, that's something I always keep in mind as well when I'm writing is that, you know, the way I tend to write is not like this classic kind of tutorial style where you have like the first thing in the in the article is like fire up a new Xcode project and then you can write this and this will happen. And you can write this and this will happen. I, I'm not saying that th those those ways of writing are bad and there's a lot of, you know, great sites that follow that. Uh, kind of pattern or that kind of way of writing, but I've always wanted to write more in a kind of exploratory way, where it's more like you know, here is is a way of looking at things. Here's a pattern. Now you can go off and try it yourself, and you can discover how you want to apply it, or you know, you might discover something new entirely, mm. or you might uh, you know agree with me, you might disagree with me. That doesn't really matter. Like for me, the goal is more to inspire and to be like you know, inspire. If I can inspire people after reading one of my articles to open up a playground, for example, and start hacking away on something, then I consider m my mission accomplished. Yeah, the di disagreeing thing is really important. Um, I saw a, a tweet this morning um, to Erica Sadun and I about one of our recent Swift of a Coffee episodes. And we were talking about how, uh, how much we like Swift's new argument parser, how, how it's really beautiful Swift 5.1 with the property wrappers and the flexibility. And he was saying, you know, I disagree with you. I don't like the way it is. It's not POSIX friendly here, here, and here. And I'm, well, I, I wrote back saying, 
And that's cool, that's great. If we all thought the same thing, it'd be a very boring world indeed, because it's okay, this, here are our views, you have your views, and that's perfectly normal. We haven't got to all see exactly the same way on stuff. Exactly. And this is a trap that I feel also that a lot of beginner writers are falling into. And I definitely fe fell into this myself. And it also comes, it's, it can also be applied to uh, conference talks and any, any form of kind of sharing or any form of discussion you want to start. Um, a common trap to fall into is that you feel this need to convince everybody of your way of thinking. And it also comes down to that, like I talked about earlier, how I was, as a more junior developer, very keen to convince people of my way of thinking. Yeah. And I'm, again, very happy that I've dropped that. And now, you know, I, I definitely don't look at, at my writing that way. Like, I am not in like, I'm not a dependency injection salesman, right? I don't get a commission every time someone <laughs> writes a unit test. Like, I'm not in the business of convincing you of X, Y, and Z. I'm in the business of just writing about it because I like it. I'm passionate about it and I want to share it. And then what you do with it, you know, if you read one of my articles and you say, well, I don't want to use that, that's great. Like, I, I don't think that's a failure at all. I think that's, that's just a, as much a success as, a, as if you read it and say, I want to use that. Mm. Again, the, the goal is to inspire and to um, inform also to some extent, but more to like, you know, he, uh, just to kind of spark something, whether that is an agreement, a disagreement, or just a curiosity, uh, whatever you're sparking, that's kind of the goal for me, not necessarily to convince someone, uh, because I, I just feel like that's kind of the, it's kind of like a backwards way of approaching something like that. Right.